No, I don't waste no time Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketer and online coach. I have my own social media marketing agency called Brampaneer and I also have my own education business where I teach you guys on basically how to do the same. So how to start your own agency, how to get your first clients, how to get results for that client so that you can basically scale that agency and also live life on your own terms. And for this video, I basically want to talk about the sales calls and then in particular the question should we do a one call close or a two call close and for those that don't really understand what i mean the one call close is basically when you get a prospect that you haven't spoken to before on a call and then within that call you basically take them through that entire journey from awareness interest desire and then to take action to actually take you on as a agency and then you take them on as a client and you get the payments in that one call, which is called the one call close. And then we also have the two call close, where we basically split those um, up into you know two separate calls. And then on the first call, we basically you know gather information. And then on the second call, we actually take the payments and close the client. And for a very long time, everyone kept telling me that the one call close was the only method to do this. You don't need two calls. Um, you know, one call is enough, provided that your sales skills are on point and, and all stuff like that. And for me, um, I'm uh, quite an introverted person and it, I always struggled with the one call close. It didn't feel right. I felt like I was rushing into things. I felt like if I would flip it around and I'd think to myself, okay, I'm a business owner myself. Would I give a complete stranger my credit card details after one call? So one 50 minute call because usually the, if you do a go for a one call close that call is longer than you know two calls split up because you know you do basically need to persuade someone to give you know their credit card details after you know you've just met them so obviously that that period that you spend together needs to be a bit longer you need a bit more of a runway um in order to get that person to that point where they are willing to trust you and you know give their credit card details and actually you know give you a payment in the form of a retainer but like I said, when I flipped the script and thought to myself, would I take or would I give someone my credit card details that I've never met before in my life? You know, it's the, the calls also, um, you know, on Zoom, it's, it's, it's digitally. Would I give someone my credit card details after just spending 50 minutes with them? Like I said, I am a business owner. I am um, what is perceived as an entrepreneur. I'm not a big fan of the word. It does get overused, but, you know, in the... In, in the it is probably the only way to basically describe what I do is entrepreneurship. So as a business owner slash entrepreneur, would I do that? And the answer is no. And that might be that uh, maybe, you know, I'm just very risk aware. Um, maybe I just don't trust the, the internet. Maybe I've been around for too long to, to trust, you know, the, the way it's currently going. But what I was thinking is, okay, well, if I wouldn't do it myself, then why would I try and persuade a client to do, to do just that? And that got me thinking, okay, then why am I still doing the one call close? Just because the, that is what the gurus say, just because that is what Jordan Belford says, that is because, you know, what, what Sam Oven says, why am I doing this? It doesn't feel right. I don't feel comfortable on these calls. Why am I doing it? Then I uh, hopped on a call with uh, a close friend of mine called uh, Max, who is basically a um, hypnotherapist. Max, if, I'm, uh, if you're watching this and I've completely butchered what you do, my apologies. But uh, we basically went into some anchoring uh, exercises and some uh, neuralistic programming exercises, etc. And uh, we got, you know, talking about sales because that is something that um, I did struggle with for a very long time. I'm by no means a sales expert right now, but I am, you know, I have improved my sales skills a lot. And I also feel, that, feel very comfortable on the sales calls, uh, which for me is a very large amount of progress because like I said, it was something that I struggled with. Um, after that call, we, um, or I basically came to the conclusion that, okay, I need to relax more on these calls. And one way for me to relax is to split it up into two calls. And then on the first one, I provide value. I gather information. On the second call, um, if I feel that we can create that win-win situation, because I think that is very important as well, then I go in for the close. So how I structure these calls, and again, this is my experience. I'm not saying this is the be all end all way and you need to do this from this moment forward. 
I recommend it because it works for me. You always need to work out what works for you. And if you think the one call close is sufficient, then by all means go for it. I know a lot of people within the industry that get great results with the one call close, but I'm just saying for me, it does not work as, as much as it should. So what I do, and uh, I do need to give a quick mention to Ryan Brown, who is a high ticket closer and also one of uh, my coaching clients. And basically, you know, I help him out with um, you know the whole agency business model. And then he basically taught me a thing or two about sales as well. So I do need to give a quick mention to him. Um, and the structure that I'm about to mention is largely um, taken from you know what he taught me. So in the first call, the main objective is to see where they are currently at in the business, okay? So what I do in the first call is I ask questions, I get to know the business owner as well, which I think is very important. A lot of people will dive straight into the, the, the sales script, if you will. Um, I am, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, of course, you know, you do need to stick to the point. The, the goal of that call is not to just talk shit for an hour. You know, the goal is obviously, the goal of the call is with the objective of you know making progress in terms of building the relationship together so that you can work together. But what I do, I just briefly talk you know to the uh, clients or potential clients, I should say, try and find common grounds. You know, are they a fan of football? Where are they based? What is the weather like there? How is the situation in terms of the pandemic there? Try and get a bit of common ground, a few little laughs, and this will be about five to ten minutes. And then from there, I will transition into the call. Now, what I do mention is how the call is going to go. So I do give them an agenda and a structure of the call uh, before moving forward. So I explain, okay, this is how uh, these calls usually go. I will ask you some questions about your business. I will dive into the numbers. And the reason why I say that is so that that is anchored in their mind that they understand, okay, we are going to be discussing metrics and numbers with regards to my business. Just so you don't just randomly blaze out, okay, how much you're making and they you know, get taken aback because you do need to know how much they're currently making, where they are currently are in their business because how can you help a business if you don't know what the problem is? You know, it's like walking up to a doctor's and expecting some kind of medicine without telling the doctor, you know, what kind of issues you have or what you're dealing with. So you need to know how much they're currently making. But like I said, you do need to pre-frame that because you are still a complete stranger to them. So like I said, I set the agenda, I make sure that they understand that I am going to be asking them questions about the numbers and then I'll continue by saying, um, you know, I'll ask where you're currently at with your business, where you're aspiring to go to. If I generally think I can help you, then I'll explain a bit more about what I do and then we can see if we can move forward from there. Does that sound fair enough? And that is how I basically sort of end that transition from just a brief conversation to getting down to business. And I then proceed by asking them questions about the current situation in their business. And rather than talking about the metrics and what the ROAS is and the profit margins and the cost per click, etc., I ask them, okay, so how much are you currently making with your business and how does that make you feel? And this is very, very important. And like I said, this is what Ryan Brown taught me is that you are diving into the emotional aspect of the business rather than just, you know, uh, the metrics. Because people do make decisions based on emotion and then they basically you know, clarify that to themselves with logic. So you need to dive deep into the emotions of the client. And this is not some kind of like persuasion technique. This is you genuinely asking the client, okay, how is it going and how is this making you feel? You know, is this person working himself to the ground, working 20 hour days just to keep it, everything afloat? Or does he have a team to do this? You know, how active is he in the business? How much is the business currently making? How much is he taking home? Is he taking a pay cut at all? And what is the profit margin? Is there any wiggle room in the profit margin? Who are his suppliers? How is that going? How is the relationship with them? Is anything affected uh, because of the pandemic and so on and so forth? Dive deep into the emotions, ask them, okay, well, the business is currently at so much, you know, how does this make you feel? What is this doing for you? Um, do you still spend time with your family? You know, do you feel like you are constantly stressed out? Can you sleep well at night? You know, those things, in my opinion, are very important questions to, to ask. And of course, you know, you need to know how far to go and when to back off. So don't just go, you know, it depends on how that person is as well, right? If that person is an alpha male, he's got no time and, you know, he's rushing into things, then to be fair, I wouldn't take that client on and I'll basically say, listen, it doesn't seem like a right fit because I just can't deal well with people like that. But just understand where that person is in terms of, you know, what kind of person that is, what is their personality like? If you notice that 
they really do enjoy you know talking about things like this and they actually feel relieved that someone's asked them how are you feeling then by all means keep going and try and go deeper and deeper and figure out you know what are their actual pain points are and then from there just take a deep breath and say okay well i really appreciate you for telling me all this but just quick side note in the sort of current situation uh, vibes you need to basically pick out how much they're currently making and what their profit margin is because those are two metrics that are very important moving forward so from there like i said take a deep breath and say okay you know i i understand that was quite difficult for you i do really appreciate you telling me all this so let's just look at the bright side of things you know where do we where do we want to go with this business what do we want to achieve you know what are the goals for this year for next year and so on and so forth and figure out okay where do they actually want to go to what is their goal because if they're currently at 10k a month and they want to go to a million a month within the next week or so then of course you know that is highly unrealistic unless they've got something really special you know behind the scenes that um the the whole world is you know not known about but figure out where they are aspiring to be because at the end of the day you are going to be accountable um or you're, you're going to be responsible for that bridge you know for the current situation to the desired situation so really understand um where they want to go to because if they don't achieve that then it's going to come down on you quick example one of our clients is currently at 5k a month um, and wants to go to 100k a month which is a very very big jump and we were on the verge of saying listen um, your expectations are unrealistic and this is something that we do not want to basically take responsibility for then we actually dived into the metrics which i will be getting into in just a second um, and we noticed that their ROAS had the potential uh, to go to 20 so they could have a return ad spend of 20 now bear in mind if you can get a return ad spend on 20 and you want to get to 100k a month then data wise all you'd need to do is spend 5,000 a month and you're there because like I said the ROAS is 20 now uh, before you guys think well you know if you're going to take on a client with ROAS at 20 why would they need you like I said we could see within the data that the potential was there just based on what they set up and when you go into the inner settings and you break down all of the metrics we could see that there was the potential there to have a ROAS of 20 so that is when we took that client on and we actually made that one sort of ad which had the ROAS of 20 we just basically um, continued along that flow so we worked with the winners cut off the losers and now overall with the entire campaign we're actually getting a ROAS of 18 so we're very close to that ROAS of 20 which we found deep down in the inner settings of Facebook but uh, like I said so that was realistic because we saw the metrics but just you know figure out for yourself okay can I actually achieve this for this client okay so in the first call you've asked them or you've basically got to know this client um, you've asked them okay where are they currently at what is the emotional you know uh, feeling attached to that where they're currently at where do they aspire to go to and then you just think to yourself okay is this something realistically that I can achieve within the next three to six months if so then you basically explain what you do and you basically position yourself as the bridge between the current situation and the desired situation so basically you just say to them listen I can definitely help you with that um, do you mind if I explain a bit more about what I do and then you know obviously they'll say yes because you've just you've just brought them on this journey from where they're currently at to where they want to be and you just said well you can be the bridge so then yes you'll, they'll be interested and say well what, what is it that you do and then you basically just explain to them listen I help businesses like yourself um, you know get more sales or more conversions dependent on what their goal is um, by leveraging Facebook advertisements and you know you basically just explain a bit more about your team about what you do etc and then from there uh, you basically finish off the call and you say to them okay listen um, this has been a very interesting call I think there's a lot of potential here to work together so this is what I propose let's schedule a call for the same time and then 48 hours max later preferably the day after but 48 hours is fine as well um, and then in the meantime if you can grant me analyst access to your ad account and business manager then I can take a deeper look and to see you know what we are working with and if we can actually help you we only take on clients that we know we can help and if we do not feel comfortable in any way shape or form take you on as a client then we will hold up our hands and say listen I'm sorry but we are not the right person or the right agency for you if we can help you then we'll basically discuss a fee for the service and you know how we can move forward does that sound fair enough and then of course the client's going to say yes because you've basically told that client that you will only work together if it's a win-win situation and if it's not then you're going to leave it from there 
you will get analyst access to their ad account. Get this on the call. So walk them through how to do it, uh, whether you do it through your personal profile, you give them their email address and they give you employee access, or you know you do it through partner access and um, you basically attach their business manager to your business manager. It doesn't really matter as long as you get analyst access in whatever way you feel most comfortable with. And then from there, you basically set a second call for max 48 hours later. What I do is I actually put this in my own Canally as if I'm filling it in as the client. Why? Because my Canally uh, basically sends them text message reminders when the next call is. And that is how I basically prevent uh, that client from not showing up to the second call, which usually they do and like, they will show up because I've got access to all of their assets. So from there, um, that is how I ensure that I get that second call because I've got analyst access and because I've set it up in Calendly where you know they basically get text message reminders and email reminders every single, you know, I think it's 24 hours beforehand, 15 minutes, uh, an hour beforehand and 15 minutes beforehand, both on text and on email. So they get like six notifications that we are on this call on the next day and then you know that from that point onwards i position in in myself into the second phase of the call now before we uh, go into the second phase of the call i do ask them at the end of call one listen you know if we think we can help you if we can you know basically get you the results that you desire and you want then are you okay moving forward with this from there they might hit you with the question well how much is this going to cost me and then you basically hold off uh, because it's not the right time for this you hold off on that and you say listen it completely depends on the scope of work and the data that you're providing us with if we think we can do a good job for you then we will pitch you on a price point that we think is fair and that will create a win-win situation again does that sound fair enough and then you've sort of put that to bed then the client is at ease the client knows okay whatever he's going to pitch me at it's going to be based on data and it's going to be something that i can afford and it will be a win-win situation then from there like i said you end call number one and then in call number two which is 24 to 48 hours later um what you do is you briefly go over what happens in call number one obviously in the meantime you've looked at the data you've got access to everything you've, you've checked all of the metrics etc um and contrary to popular belief you don't actually mention all of that in the second call so you don't actually go into the metrics the metrics are for you so you know can you actually get results for this client and of course you know you need to be honest with yourself and with this client if you can't get results for this client or if you think it's it's going to be too much work for the price point that you're going to ask and the price point that you're going to ask is not going to be profitable for the client then just let the client know because it will be too much of a headache to take on so from there let's say that the client is a right fit for you you can get results for this client and you have transitioned yourself into the second call then on the second call again you briefly go over um how the last few days have been so you know what have you been up to have you been busy um you know is everything still okay is everything still the same nothing's happened within 48 hours that's completely changed the direction of your company no okay great then uh, i just want to briefly you know go over what um, we discussed in the first call just to make sure that everything is still you know as is and there has been no unexpected turn of events and then you dive back into the current situation okay so you're currently still here this is still making you feel like this um and then you know this is still causing sleepless nights this is still you know causing issues with your business and so on and so forth okay so that is still true and you still aspire to go to here you still aspire to hit a certain monthly recurring revenue a certain profit margin a certain amount of cash in the bank and so on and so forth okay so uh, as i mentioned in the previous call you know this is something that we can do um, and looking at the data i am extremely confident that we can achieve this for you and then from there you basically transition yourself into the actual pitch so from there you mention all the things that you're going to do and then without giving them everything you know how to do it you just mention what you're going to do okay sell the sizzle not the steak so we don't actually mention oh we're going to uh, add more creatives to your top of funnel so that we can see which one has the highest outbound ctr the client doesn't care about that okay the client just wants to know okay can is my business in good hands with this agency so you mentioned okay listen what we're going to do is twofold or threefold you know again it depends on the type of business um, what we're going to do is we are going to drive traffic to your page uh, we're going to get you more customers onto the page that look like your ideal audience we base this off people that have previously purchased then from there we're going to see you know who actually um, is adding to cart initiating checkouts etc and for those that don't purchase first time round, we're going to retarget them with a different advertisement that entices them more to get back onto the page and make a purchase and then you be briefly explain what you're going to do the benefits of that and you also tie that to the emotional 
um, aspects of the client. So, you know, but let's say the client says that, um, you know, he's working 20 hour days, um, trying to figure out where he can get his next customer from. Then you tie it to that, you say, listen, we're going to drive traffic to your website without you manually needing to do anything. Um, you know, so that frees up your time to spend more time with your family or to spend more time with your kids or so that you can pick up your kids from school or, you know, whatever. Again, depending on what their current situation was and how they, that was making them feel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to retarget those people um, with retargeting ads so that you don't need to manually call all these people up and get them back onto the website. You don't need to spend all this time on the business because we've got the ads that are doing it for them. Um, then we're going to automate this and we're going to set up email sequences, etc. You know, depending on what your service is, of course, and then keep tying it to the emotional aspects of the current situation of the client. Okay, so mention everything, stack all the things that you're going to do for the business and what the benefits are for him. So don't mention, oh, we're going to increase the CTR because the client doesn't care. Tie it to, you know, like I said, how the client is feeling. Then from there, you mention the price and we're going to do all of this for a set fee of whatever, a thousand a month, 2000 a month, depending on what your um, retainer is and what is going to be profitable for this client. And then from there, you do shut up what, you know, a lot of the gurus do mention. It does work, you know, it, it, as cringy and as cheesy as it feels and, the, you know, the feeling when you do it, you feel like you are the ultimate sales sleaze, but it does work. Just shut up and look the client straight in the eye and just wait for them to respond. Then the client will usually give you some um, objections, which you can then handle or the clients will basically say, okay, so what is the next step? Then you say, well, first of all, congratulations on making a great decision and for choosing us as a agency, you know, we are going to go above and beyond to get you these results because, you know, at the end of the day, we do take pride in what we do. And, you know, part of the reason for this is because if we do a good job for our clients, um, we get referrals and, you know, our reputation increases on and offline. The next step now is to basically sign the contract so that you know what you can expect from us. And from there, you know, we can take the payments and we can get you onboarded. Then you basically get the payments and the contract signed on that second call. And then you ask them, you know, um, I still have analyst access to your ad account and business manager. Can you upgrade that to uh, admin access? So previously, um, you know, I was not able to set up any ads. I was only able to look at the data with admin access. I can actually set up the ads uh, so that you don't have to. And then from there, you know, you, you take the payments and you take a deep breath because you just signed your first or whatever amount of uh, clients. So that is basically how I do it. Like I said, this is what works for me. Uh, this is not the be all end all way. You know, try what works for you. If you feel very comfortable with the one call closed, then by all means do it. Like I said, this is how I do it. I'm a relatively intro introverted person. I do not always feel comfortable on sales calls, but by doing it this way, I feel more comfortable. I feel more relaxed. I feel more genuine as well. I don't feel like a sleazy sales guy trying to pitch someone on a service that isn't actually worth the retainer, etc. And um, I feel like my clients are very happy with this method as well because it comes across as more genuine rather than the, the one call close trying to fit it all in in like a 15 minute or 50, whatever, you know, how long that call is window. So that is all I've got for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to know more about the, the sales tactics that we use, uh, and strategies, etc., along with how to actually, you know, reach out to these clients and get results for these clients. I do have my own coaching program. If that sounds something that you are interested in, then what you can do is you can book a call with the link in the description box down below. We can see if it's a right fit for you. Um, this is a one call close. Now I'm just kidding. This is basically, you know, what we do is we uh, ask you some questions, you know, where, you know, you want to go with your agency. And if we think that the program is uh, a good fit for you, then we will offer you a place uh, in the program, if not, then you, you know how I feel, then it's not the end of the world. We've just made a new connection within the industry and we just go our separate ways. But for now, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you all in the next video.